this is SGM4306 back with another project video. This time, uh, I've been lucky enough to uh, been able to work with um, PCBWay. They provided all the PCBs for this project. And so, yeah, I'm really happy to, uh, to be able to start working on projects again. Uh, this guy is a variation of a uh, small LED matrix that I designed before. That was an 8x8 matrix that then tiled into larger matrices. This is very much in the style of, um, there's a company, I, I think they're called Lixie Labs, and they designed a board that's pretty much exactly like this. This is not just inspired, this is pretty much exactly the same thing. I just wanted to make my own version of it. And uh, yeah, so you can see here, there are matrices of seven by five, and then each one has two digits and you can solder them together. And they basically just chain together like this and you just put a little bit of solder, um, you blob them on there and then uh, you can make like larger chains of uh, alphanumeric displays. And these are like the WS2812 style RGB LEDs. So these are serially controlled, hence why there are only three wires to control all these LEDs. Uh, this other board was, I designed this for another project involving stepper motors. You can see the, the name of it there. I'm just using this as like a test platform though. Uh, these displays, you can control them with any number of controllers and whatnot, but uh, this is basically just a clock board with a serial RTC, an IR receiver for like a remote control, a light sensor, an LDR, and a couple buttons and whatnot, and some LEDs. But yeah, so I just wanted to, uh, to show you guys this. Uh, before we actually get into the demo, I wanted to show you guys a bit about assembling these, uh, how, how exactly I went about doing so, because you can see that the LEDs are absolutely tiny. You can see my finger right next to it. Uh, so these are actually a little bit, it takes a little bit of practice to be able to hand place like some you know LEDs that are this small. So let's uh, go to the segment about that. You can see I, have not soldered these yet, but I have assembled three uh, PCBs with these tiny little SMD LEDs. And so I just wanted to make a very quick video of, uh, I guess you could call it tweezer etiquette or tweezer tips uh, in order how you can actually assemble these seemingly tiny things that look like they should, you know, absolutely require machine assembly, but yet you could still do by hand. So let's get right into it. So say you don't have a vacuum pickup tool and you have like so these are 1.5 by 1.5 millimeters, which is insanely tiny. And you can barely see the actual pads underneath if I flip it over. Just take this one and just flip it over. You can see the gold pads on the bottom, but they're absolutely minuscule. So uh, handling these can be quite a, a pain. So I would suggest getting like an angled pair of tweezers like this so that you can grab them from the top. Uh, first off, uh, one of the things that you're going to need to know if you're if you're dealing with packages like this get a stencil and get solder paste they make uh like low temperature solder paste now that you can store not necessarily you don't have to store it in the fridge so they'll last about a year you can get a small vial of it they're not too expensive definitely get leaded uh, solder paste but anyway uh so it helps to manipulate the board either using just the tip of the tweezers don't touch the board because you'll probably smear the solder paste or using the back end of your tweezers actually pretty good for manipulating the board uh, for symmetrical components like this you need to be really careful to double check the orientation because it's okay if you have to reflow one chip to put it on the right way if you messed up but imagine trying to flip every one of these chips rotated by 90 degrees now it's too much of a pain so these components come in these long strips, which are me meant to be like machine fed. And so it's kind of hard. It it's okay if you have like, you can 3D print a, a rail thing that'll hold that for you and you advance it by like one chip at a time. And that's okay if you are very dexterous and or you have a vacuum pickup tool. If not, just dump them out. Uh, there's like roughly 50-50 chance whether they'll land face up or face down. If they land face up, it's, it's a pain to try to get it to, to stand up right. You can try the, the uh, pick it up in the air and drop in. There's another 50-50 chance of getting it the right way. But say it's the wrong way and it's not cooperating. Uh, easiest thing to press on one of the edges to stand it upright and then just flip it over like that. Uh, double check the orientation, like I said, these are RGB LEDs, uh, they're the WS2812 style ones, 
and so there is some f visible features they have like a little chip on the right hand side i align them all to the right edge because that's how they have to go on the board another tip uh these are anti-static tweezers uh, may or may not be necessary but uh for the most part these can magnetize and when they do magnetize these parts are so light that they'll stick to the tip and they won't release reliably uh and also if you ever touch the tip of these with your fingers you'll get finger oils on it and that'll also make the chip stick to it and that's really irritating so get one of these uh, butane lighters and just before you're about to use them just give them a quick blast and that's it maybe a couple times and not so much that you leave a soot on the uh the actual tip of the tweezers but it'll burn off any oils and also the heat will demagnetize them like instantly you can use like they sell demagnetization blocks uh but just having like a lighter or something around real quick to uh, just blast the tip of the uh the tweezers is usually good enough i find so okay uh, i have all these parts aligned they just have to go on there so how do i do that so First off, you want to choke up on the actual tweezers. You can, you'll see like it has this uh, this pattern here. Uh, you don't want to be grasping them all the way back here because you're going to create a lever arm, which is really, it'll amplify any small hand tremors. Uh, my hands are fairly steady, but they're not like amazing either. So I choke up to give me the best chance possible. And what I'll end up doing is I'll put my uh, pointer finger on the other hand either above or below i usually do it above just because then i won't accidentally touch the board so i'll put it above to steady it and i put both my uh my palms on the table as close as possible to the board while still having some maneuverability like up down left and right so as an example uh, as i screw up this one chips orientation uh so you want also want to keep your head kind of close so you can physically physically see the uh, the chip the orientation the alignment and it helps to have really good lighting obviously so I have like a gooseneck lamp that's actually you know probably within 10 inches right above this so that's sort of ideal so you want to pick up the chip and then I'm gonna place my hand choke up on the uh, the tweezers and use my finger to steady it and then just drop it and these chips because they don't have any leads you kind of want to give them a little bit of a press if you don't the chip can possibly tombstone which is where it'll sort of like flip up vertically while the solder is heating because it's sort of the uh the viscosity of the solder melting it might not melt evenly and you just really want to make sure that you align it kind of as best as possible if it's slightly crooked then it helps to, I close the tweezers and then I give it a little, I hold my breath and I give it a little tap from the one side. And now that looks good. So I'll do another one. Ideally, you kind of want to just drop it right above and then just give it like one or two taps down. You don't have to push very hard. You just want to slightly squish the uh, solder paste balls underneath uh, so that the chip isn't just lying on the surface. So that one's a little crooked, so this is harder doing while talking, but there we go. And then just give it a little love tap, and yeah, they're set. So I've done three. I'm going to finish up this board and then get to reflowing. But these were just a few quick tips on generally how to manipulate very tiny parts and how to use tweezers. Uh, these are just things that I've learned through trial and error. These aren't the only tips, and these aren't necessarily the best tips, but they're what I find works for me and my level of, like, hand-eye coordination. So hopefully this helps you with your projects. Oh yeah, one last thing. So you might think you need to get the part on absolutely perfectly, and you don't. Uh, the way that solder paste works is when you heat it up, there's some uh, surface tension of the molten liquid solder, and it'll pull parts in as long as they're not too off. And even if they're too off, all you have to do is just grab like a little pin or something, or even you could use the tips of your tweezers, but I like using this pin. And you just give it a little tap, and if you get it close enough, it'll snap right into place as if it's being pulled by a rubber band. So you generally need to get it pretty good, but not absolutely perfect. And yeah, pretty good is usually good enough.
Okay, so we are back. So let's go through with the demo. Luckily, I all the buttons I've replicated on this random remote. I think this was a, a remote for a uh, like a dehum dehumidifier or something. I just uh, you know used an Arduino sketch to read what each button code was, and then I programmed those. Co I hard coded it into the, my software so that when I press the buttons, it replicates the button like the physical button presses on the device itself. So I just want to take you through a quick demo. You don't, you can use this type of display for anything. I'm, I'm just, I just made a clock because I make a clock out of everything. Uh, I might have to put up down the camera. Oh, no, I got it. There we go. So you can see it's just white at the moment. So the way I have this program, there are three buttons on the remote that I use: the power button, and then plus and minus. The power button is just to set the time. So if I click it. It'll go into set. It says set in red, and then the green digit is the one that you're modifying. So it's two, three, and I can go up and down. Then if I hit the power button again, it'll move the green digit to the minutes. And so I can adjust that. So I can do up or down. Then I hit this a third time, and it exits out, and now it's in timekeeping mode. Uh, my circuit does have a real-time clock battery, so it keeps the clock running even if it's unplugged for like at least a little while until that capacitor uh, dies. Uh, additionally, so I do have, there is a dimming, uh, well, kind of hard to see, but you could see it does like brighten and dim depending on if I cover with my hand. I did learn something interesting about these LEDs. Uh, you have to keep sort of like 25% or so of the margin of your adjustment. I, I believe it's 24 bits, so eight bits per like red, green, and blue channel. You have to keep like a little bit of a margin for each color above and below what you're modulating. Otherwise you'll get colors dropping out because it, you just run into the lower end of the range. So for white, it doesn't really matter because they're all the same intensity, uh, but as you change the colors, um, sometimes I've noticed if the lighting condition is like just on the borderline, I have this set to dim in proportion to like the ambient lighting. Sometimes I'll catch it in the corner of my eye, like the green channel will drop out and it'll turn to red instead of orange. Uh, so yeah, that's just an interesting thing that I've noticed. These are obviously serially controlled, so my microcontroller in the back there has to store all the data for every single pixel. Uh, so there is a limit for any controller how many of these you can string together. There's also a power supply limitation uh, because these on full brightness, which is not on full brightness right now, but they do consume quite a bit of current, so it adds up if you have like a lot of LEDs lit at once. Uh, right now I'm just powering this off of actually the, uh, the dock from my Switch. It's just plugged into the USB port, so uh, I don't have like a super massive lot of LEDs lit right now, so it works just fine off. So if I press the plus minus buttons, I can uh, cycle through the different colors. So let's just um, go to the beginning. Let's see. So I just randomly chose the colors. Uh, I, I try to choose sort of like Roy G. Biv colors, but, uh, I think I'm going to have to fine tune some of the colors aren't really as pure as I'd like them, uh, because I'm using like the HSV values. Uh, it's basically like the color wheel. It's it continuously cycles around. I'm not doing raw red, green, and blue mixing. Uh, but you can see here we have red. If I go up, we have sort of a orangish yellow. And then we have a more yellow yellow, and we have green, then we have this sort of teal, we have blue. I think I'm going to have to do something in the circuit to like decouple the uh, IR receiver because sometimes it doesn't pick up, even though I'm pretty close to it, it doesn't pick up the remote signal correctly, so it just looks like it ignores it. So we got blue here, and we have purple, then we have like pink. And we have white, and then, come on, my favorite is rainbow. And this rainbow actually changes based if it's seated by the second counter. So you'll see it starts shifting after the second starts climbing. 
uh, when it's like zero, uh, red, the zero digit here is red, but you can see it's shifting towards orange. And uh, yeah, it looks very nice. So, so my plan is uh, for at least this project, I'm gonna release all the files for free. Uh, going forward, I, I put up like a little questionnaire thing on my uh, the community tab uh, not that long ago about getting feedback on how you guys feel about certain projects I spend a lot of time on. I think I'm gonna have to start charging for like the design files if if I you know if it's something that I completely created myself. If it's something that uses other open source software, I don't feel comfortable charging for that. So in which case, uh, those specific files that I didn't uniquely create completely by myself, then I will release for free. But if it's anything like a PCB that I designed completely by myself, I'm going to start, um, I'm probably going to make like a, uh, like a membership tier or something for my channel where you can join and then, or maybe I'll do it through Patreon, uh, where if you pay a fixed amount, then I, I can send you the files and you can build it yourself if you're interested in. Uh, but yeah, for this project, um, I'm just going to publicly make everything available and whatnot. Uh, and hopefully you guys can design some really cool, you know, large format matrix displays. I definitely like to see, um, like a Wi-Fi controlled thing and have this like scroll time and weather and, and maybe the news or something like that. Uh, but yeah, just assembling these eight digits took me probably like two and a half, three hours. And that was with a stencil, but manually hand placing it. So definitely a bit tedious, but like the outcome is like absolutely gorgeous. I'm really happy with that. So yeah. Anyway, once again, huge thanks to PCBWay for, um, for providing the PCBs used in this project. And I have a couple more projects uh, coming up. Like I noted before uh, on the silk screen on this, it says uh, step clock. So that might give you an idea. I've posted a picture already before of uh, the work in progress on that. That's going a little bit slow because I have to print a lot of parts and um, I only have like one functioning printer in the house right now. So I'm kind of limited in how much I can print and how much time I can spend on that. Uh, but that's coming up soon. Uh, so anyway, uh, if you guys have any ideas on maybe how I can improve this project or things that I should do with these kind of displays, uh, put them down below and I will see you in the next one. Bye.